What is up, YouTube.com? This is another episode of your the best series on YouTube of How to Grow Wealth. I'm just kidding. Um, but this definitely will help you grow wealth. This is another episode of How to Grow Wealth. It is me reading Proverbs and then giving commentary on it in a way that materialists and secularists slash atheists can derive value from it without getting so hung up on the word God and Lord and stuff like that. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that uh, Proverbs can generate wealth for you very easily because my biggest proof of that would be the Jews. This, not necessarily Jews in general, but the uh, stereotype that Jews make a lot of money. And it's a lot of it has to do with their religion, obviously, because what else would it be? So let me just hop right into it. Let me shrink and then hop over for you real quickly. I will jump. Boom. All right. So we got Proverbs 4, New International Version. And then I have to kind of just like, I'm just going to read, give commentary, just really break stuff down for people because like the Bible is pretty thick reading. So Proverbs 4, New International Version, get wisdom at any cost. Okay. That is making a plead with you. Please get it at any cost because honestly, okay, even the title is some, is a great spot for us to stop and talk about because think about this, okay? So how is money made? Money is usually made because you, uh, money is made by doing things, okay? So how do you do those things? Uh, and like you just have to learn uh, wisdom begets doing things because and begets means like with wisdom you have knowledge of how to do things like you can't just do things you have to know how to do things and what you ought to do to do things to get wealth that's why it's the the title here is super important because like i know i'm like super already hung up on uh seemingly pedantic things but uh little details but Getting wisdom at any cost just jumps out at me and tells me yes, 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 yes. Because if you say you're, you know, you're working minimum wage, you're, you're working at Walmart, Amazon, whatever, fifteen dollars an hour, sixteen dollars an hour, twenty dollars an hour, and stuff like that, and you have this like cushy lifestyle. But like, if you knew, if you made five thousand dollars a month, so you got, you know, four hundred one k, you put it in savings for that and stuff like that, you got like twenty thousand dollars. Let's say you got like ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, five hundred dollars, or whatever. If you spent 100% of your income, but in return, you learned, they taught you step by step how to make a million dollars, would you really give a shit? And that is why I think that this is already such a, a compelling thing to say, because that is what this is saying. Why? I can already tell this is why it's saying that. So, listen, my sons, to a father's instruction, pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. So here it's saying, listen, pay attention. You know, it's it's calling, it's perking your brain up. It's getting you started. That's why it's, it starts off like this. Because it's like, you can't just start saying the instructions. You have to like do the call. You know, you're like YouTube stuff. If you're a YouTuber or whatever, and you know, like that type of stuff. There's a call to action. You know, please subscribe. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. Saying that is a call to action. It asks you to do something that you normally wouldn't do. But because it's been put in your mind, now you have a choice to do it or not do it. So it increases the likelihood that you're going to do it. That's why these start like this. I don't, that's, that's a weird thing. I had to get over for a while, but now I understand that. So listen, my sons to a father's instruction, pay attention and get understanding. This is your first instruction in the, um, in the like programming your brain. I give you sound learning and he's, uh, so do not forsake my teaching saying this is valuable. So do not forsake meaning like get rid of, do not go against for I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me and he said to me, Take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Cherish her and she will exalt you. Exalting means lift you up. Make you the highest. Exalting? Okay, this is kind of a good, a good concept. Um, why does exalting matter? Why does honor matter? Because like, if you are exalted, as a society, when you say something to society, they either validate it or don't validate it. And that's a lot of like human, the human condition is getting validated by your peers and stuff like that. That's why people are so adamant on like, 
posturing, you know, like you've heard of the word before, moral, maybe, maybe moral posturing or like trying to get clout. You heard those types of terms. It's because that if society puts you there, that means like in a way you got money coming to you because you're the highest rank. Think about everything that exists like sports, you know, a high school football star isn't going to get paid, but like Tom Brady is going to get paid. You know what I'm saying? And that's like part of the utility of being exalted. That's what this is saying too. And it is telling you here, wisdom will exalt you. It will lift you up. Therefore putting you in a position to make money, embrace her. And she will honor you. Same thing with honor. She will give you a garland to grace your head. A garland isn't a piece of honor. It is a symbol to, the rest of society to show that you are of honor. Um, you are of a high class. It will present you with a glorious crown. Same thing right here. This is a little bit easier for me to explain that. See that? That's why we use like two examples because a garland may be a little bit, you know, you use two things to, if you say two things of similar nature to explain the one thing, then it's like, it's like more evidence to support or more metaphor to support the original premise. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and then the years of your life will be many. So, okay, I just want to stop here. Why is this so? I mean, like, at face value, that sounds important, and I feel like a lot of people would um, view that as important. Having a long life is very nice, something to look forward to, something to, like, want. But another part of this is why it is um, valuable Is because, is that how you spell valuable? I don't know how to spell valuable. Let's just do this. That sounds funnier. Valuable is because um, if you live for a longer period, you are more likely to gain wealth. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody who dies when they're 10 is going to make a lot less money than somebody who dies when they're 90. So this is very important uh, as well to bring that out for the context of what we're talking about and wealth. About wealth. Okay? I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. Okay. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Okay. So um, it's it's saying these four things here and these four things, like I said before about a long life, these four things all tie into each other. If you have straight paths, that means progression, straight progression. You know, say you're lifting weights. And I use a lot of the same analogies, but it makes sense here again. So I'm going to use it again. When you lift weights, if you have a straight path, that means say you want to have a 225 bench and you can only bench 45 pounds. A straight path there would be adding five pounds every single time you bench the weight all the way up to 225. Straight path. You get there very quickly. But if you do it incorrectly on the way there, on a, a crooked path, for instance, it, it will be a, um, a crooked path and it will take you longer to get there so it's not as efficient. Uh, if your steps are hampered, have you ever felt like a boss has been holding you back? Have you ever felt like you've been being held back by a circumstance or somebody like a teacher or a coworker or a friend like that? Uh, that inhibits wealth. Um, if you stumble, that means you are impl it's implied you've made a mistake or, you know, something bad has happened to you, therefore impeding your wealth. Um, if you guard it life or if you guard it well for it is your life, if it becomes your life, then you will not stumble. You will not be hampered. You will have straight paths. So therefore insinuating that your wealth will be growing a lot faster than normal people, okay? Let's move on. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of, its, of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your own way. For they cannot rest until they do evil. They are robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Okay? So let's kind of talk about this maybe a little bit. That's Seth Path. So this is just saying, don't hang out with like wicked people. Um, and it doesn't really matter whether it is objectively true or not. If you have a, uh, an, an, an inst if you hear this and people stick out in your head, limit your contact with them. You don't need to tell them to go fuck themselves or anything like that, but you just limit your contact with them. Okay. Because your instincts, you may be a dummy up here, but your body, your lizard brain, it, it's got a sense for these types of things. You know what I mean? So just trust that a little bit. Maybe examine it a little bit. At least investigate. At least investigate it. And then take them off the path because this is true. People who do bad things tend to do bad things. Just And it's the same inversely too. If you do good things, you tend to do more good things. And it's the same way the other way around. Like that is a, um, 
that's a common principle in the secular science, whatever. And I'm sure there's a lot of studies that back up what I just said right there. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, whatever. I'm not going to die on that hill. I'm not here to, I'm not here to fight you or whatever. Just take my word for it. Think about this. Anybody in your head that you, you immediately think you can cut off, just maybe examine it or make moves to do that. Because a lot of like what growing wealth actually has been, especially for me, isn't necessarily doing the right things. It's beginning to stop doing the wrong things. It's, it's increasing like it's 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 decreasing i was gonna say it another way but it's decreasing the amount of bad things you do which kill your wealth so like for me like i i cut back on drinking i stopped smoking cigarettes i um stopped taking drugs i stopped partying all the time i um one of the first things even while i was partying i was still doing it i stopped going to the bar so i partied at the house because the 30 rack was a lot cheaper than buying one beer at the one beer at the bar you know what i'm saying um i stopped you know what i mean by just like reeling back the bad things in your life or the things that don't generate value will also generate you value. Uh, so, okay, let's move on. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter till the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like a deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble, which is, I mean, again, like I, I read this and I can think of a few people in my head of people I've crossed paths with um, about the second part here. Um, the way the wicked is like a deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. I don't know. Can you feel? I, I can think of like three or four people off the top of my head that they just, they just, a lot of bad things keep happening to them and they just don't seem to understand why. But you're that friend who just keeps going, bro, wake the fuck up. Stop doing blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And I'm just saying it like that because I'm not trying to give you a specific because I want you to think of somebody in your head because I guarantee everybody's got that friend. Maybe you are that friend. Think about that too. That'll also help you. Maybe talk to the people that you are friends with or associate with and ask them, am I this type of person? Not, not say, Hey, do you think that I'm wicked? Like the deep darkness? Um, but you know, do you think I like, we're, you know, seek feedback from them. And then like from their feedback, you should be able to determine like if, if like you have like 10 associates or something like that, and they all kind of give you the same message, take everything. Everybody says with a grain of salt always, but if they kind of give you the same message, there's a good chance that you might be that person too, and you need to wake up and then like start trying to revert yourself to this new path here to be righteous, like being like the morning sun. Because like, I mean, have you ever seen a movie? The hero is always like, oh, oh and everybody like worships everything they do, and they always win, they always get the girl, they always become like the king of the whatever. Uh, you know what I mean? So like, this is like a um, this is a, a common theme of the human condition, and it is true. It just is true. If you're righteous, people kind of like worship the ground you walk on more or less. You know what I mean? They always got good things to say about you, stuff like that. Being righteous has really a lot more net positive by net positive. There's a lot more good things going for you than bad things. That's at the end of the day. That's it. So then my son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. Again, reiterating because I mean, like we're here, we're 20 some verses down. So this is a good spot to reiterate, to reprogram and reperk your brain to keep your uh, get your brain ready. This is super important. You know what I mean? Like your brain works. Um, your brain, is, like I like to think of the brain, like there's parts of your brain that are separate entities. You know, you heard this, the conscious, the subconscious, the subconscious. It is like it 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 stores things that are perceived as valuable. So when you read this and then you like reaffirm to yourself that this is valuable stuff, it's more likely to imprint into your subconscious when you go to sleep tonight that's the important part of like making these like reminders that hey bro this is important remember wake up bro wake, wake up this is important i'm pleading with you i'm repeating this because it is super important i'm gonna speed run it again my son pay attention to what i say turn your ear to my words do not let them out of your sight keep them within your heart for they are life to those who find them and help to one's whole body true 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 just wholeheartedly true. Wisdom is good for your whole body. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. True. You know what I mean? Your attitude precedes everything. And your your heart can be thought of as your attitude. So your, your attitude is going to precede literally everything you do. So guard it. Guard your attitude. Don't let people fuck it up. Don't fuck it up yourself. Don't fall into patterns that fuck it up. And I'm not perfect here. I'm not telling you like I'm better than you or anything like that. I do this. I struggle with this daily. And that's how I know that this is true. The more, if I'm not tight on my, like guarding my attitude, guarding my heart, 
Um, it messes up my whole day and I lose an entire day of work. It's just, it's just true. It's true. It's such, it's such, this is such good wisdom. And if you do that, like if you guard your heart and keep your days productive, wealth grows. Okay. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Um, so I want to comment on this one personally. I did swear this episode too, and I'm not necessarily, I don't think this is necessarily swearing, like nonchalantly, matter of factly. Cursing, maybe, you know what I mean? There's a there's a conversation to always be had about that, but I'm not necessarily thinking that this is technically talking about swearing or cursing or whatever, like saying shit or poop or fuck every once in a while is like a uh, sentence filler or in the context of just, a, if it's a word, like the meaning of the word matters more than the word itself. You know what I mean? Um, so what the fuck dude, or like go fucking kill yourself. You fucking piece of shit. Fuck means different things there. Uh, but yeah, but the reason why this is important is because like from your heart, your attitude comes out. And then I don't know if you've ever said this, but like, if you give in, like, so for me, what I try to do when I, I feel a negative attitude, the, the, the thing, and I fail about this all the time, but I'm just, this is a little tip from me, but if I could just keep myself, if I could just force myself to shut the fuck up and bottle it up, and like this sounds bad, don't bottle up your feelings, let it out, da, 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 da. vent, bro, vent. No, every time I vented or tried to like just let it out, all it did was intensify a negative attitude. And like, yes, there's ways to vent it out, and I feel like that's through hard work or exercise or being like, you know what I mean, like. In, being in control, not just like going off the handle and blowing your top off and stuff like that. Uh, you should still try to conduct yourself and try to control yourself just to keep the corrupt talk. Because like, if you allow yourself to talk corruptly or like bad, then you're allowing the, like it's a one step towards allowing the next bad step higher than that. Is I'm trying to make this as simple as possible without like talking about it too much. But so I hope that makes sense. So don't even like if 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 anything just 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 shut the fuck up. If you don't know what to do here, just shut the fuck up. That's I, you're 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 usually safe shutting the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Cops ask you some questions, shut the fuck up. I don't know. They can't like. You might get in trouble if you like don't talk to them, but you'll get in a lot more trouble if you say the wrong thing. So I mean, like, there's that plus like. There's a, there's like a multitude of instances, like instances where just shutting the fuck up is going to be better than like talking. So that like and, and right here is like why that is because corrupt talk will ruin your life. Essentially is what this is saying. Perversity, corrupt talk, blah, blah, blah. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your grade. Okay. I'm going to go back into reading. Sorry. I just keep jumping back into that randomly, but I should try to like bridge it by saying I'm going to do it now. But yeah, that rant's over. Verse 25, Proverbs 4. We're almost done. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Steadfast. Let's look that up. Beautifully firm and unwavering. So that's a, that's a good working definition. Uh, firm. And be firm in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. So... There's a thing this guy, Alex Ramosi, says all the time. Um, and he says it all the time when he's talking about business. It's like, the better you get at business, uh, if anybody's ever seen the movie The Matrix, he, he references that a lot. It says you have to say no to the woman in the red dress. And when it's, when it's uh, you're not very good at business, the uh, the woman in the red dress is a crack whore of the, of the corner. It's easy to say no to her because she's just a crack whore. But like, as businesses, or what he, like in his story, he talks about, like, the woman in the red dress is, becomes this hotter chick that's harder to say no to. And yada, yada, that's not like whatever. It doesn't really matter if like who cares about girls, but like what it what it what it's really signifying is that you'll have temptations that become harder and harder to say no to, and that is what this is telling you not to do. Like it is a uh, it is a call to action to just hyper focus on the thing. Like you know, you you sat down, you did your you know, I wanted this, I did just you know what I mean. Like my life sucks. I need to do this. This is my new mission statement. This is my new life goal. Here's all my goals, and you need to just circle it. And then hammer, hammer in on it. And then cut it or really focus in on it. And it's like, it's it's whatever is important to you. Like, so for me, it's like family, you know, uh, my woman, my woman is number, uh, so like, okay, God, 
my, my faith is number one, then my woman, then my family. So my kids and then everything else, you know what I mean? Like then all the work and all that stuff, like my mission statement and stuff like that. And then that is, a, this is a good reminder for myself too. I need to like write it down and then have it when I get up in the morning. Cause I have like a, a schedule now and just like, look at that and go, here's what's important to me. Here's, here's my, here's my, um, what is the word? Um, my non-negotiables, these come first. So I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, check in there, blah, blah, blah. blah and I'm going to only focus on these things. Fuck everything else. And that is how you're going to make it, bro. Like, I don't know how to necessarily build a drop shipping business. I don't know how to invest in crypto to flip a bunch of money to give you a bunch of money. But I know if you do that one thing right there, if you made it this far, you do that one thing I just said right there, you are going to have more money by the end of the month, more wealth. And wealth, I don't just mean monetarily. I just mean in all spheres of what wealth is. Peace, ambition, energy, um, cohesion with your woman, whatever, or your family, whatever. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be, you're going to have more success. You're going to be more successful just doing that and hammering home on that. And that, I will end this episode and thank you all for watching. I think if you've made it this far, you should definitely subscribe because if you have it, if you, if it's in you that you sat through an entire video of me just ranting and raving about whatever, I think that you should be subscribed because you, you and I should be uh, partnered up or whatever. You know what I mean? I got what you need and you should be subscribed. So hopefully I can serve you all and do good and do better every single day. I'm trying my hardest every single day and I know it may not seem like a lot, but again, I'm, I'm going to keep getting better. I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep hustling. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you guys later.